Hi everyone. One of those issues that can be a real struggle for new users is tramming their machine, or the process of ensuring that your spindle and end mill are perfectly square to the waste board. A poorly trammed setup can lead to tooling marks on the bottom of pockets or along the edges of profile cuts, sometimes called water lines. To see why a poorly trammed machine can be such an issue, let's look at an extreme example. Here on the left is a bit that is extremely skewed away from being perpendicular to the material. As the bit cuts, one side will be deeper than the other, leaving lines or ridges in the material. The shoulder of the cut will likewise be cut at an angle, leaving an edge with ridges or lines. Unfortunately, it doesn't take a machine too far out of perfect square to cause these issues. There's already a lot of videos and resources dedicated to how to tram your Shapeoko, so I don't want to repeat a lot of that material here. Instead, I'll link to some of the more popular videos in the description below. What I wanted to do here was to compare a few tools that I've found helpful when tramming my machine. We'll compare how they're used and we'll take a look at what kind of results you can expect from each. I'll put links to all the tools that I use in the description below in case you think they would be right for your setup. One of the more underrated tools when it comes to squaring your machine are 123 blocks. 123 blocks are machinist tools meant to help with a variety of tasks around the shop. Their name comes from the 1 inch by 2 inch by 3 inch dimensions, and they typically come drilled and sometimes tapped, which lets you set up fixturing on all kinds of setups. They also make a really good reference for square. Here you can see I'm visually checking the squareness of my extended reach end mill against the surface of my wasteboard. I don't see any gaps between the block and the end mill, which makes sense as my machine has been dialed in pretty well. While this won't give you an exact measurement or how many thousandths of an inch your tramming setup is off, they're really good for that initial calibration of the machine when you want it to be pretty close so you can surface your wasteboard, but you aren't quite ready to go chasing thousandths. Once you've done your initial tramming and surfaced your wasteboard, then you can go back with some of the more precise tools to really dial it in. The biggest advantage I find to using 123 blocks instead of something like a machinist square is they fit really easily between the bottom of the router and the wasteboard. Probably the de facto standard in high quality tramming setups is the Edge Technologies Mini Pro Tram System. The advantages to the system are pretty numerous. It has two highly accurate dial indicators, and if you get the Mini Pro Tram, it comes set up with a 1 quarter inch shank that can go right into your DeWalt or Makita router. The negatives are cost. This particular tool is over $100. If you're using your Shapeoko for commercial purposes, you can probably easily justify that cost. But for people doing it as a hobby who've probably already spent a lot of money on the machine and end mills, it can be an additional cost you weren't expecting to pay. Let's take a look at how I used it to check the squareness of my machine. I begin by rotating the tool until one of the dial indicators is over a particular spot on my wasteboard. I then rotate the dial indicator to zero it out. Here I've rotated the tool 180 degrees until the other dial indicator is over the same spot on my wasteboard. I then repeat the process and zero out this dial indicator. Once the dial indicators are zeroed out this way, I know that a similar reading on both indicates squareness. In this case, the tool is indicating about a three thousandths of an inch difference across the three inch distance between the dial indicators. The tool I was interested in comparing to the more expensive Pro Tram system was one of these digital angle gauges. These small electronic devices contain an accelerometer inside which can measure the angle of a surface relative to one it's been zeroed against. I was skeptical at first, but they seem surprisingly sensitive to changes in their angle. Here I've zeroed out the gauge against my 123 block and I'm inserting a thin sheet of paper in between one side and the 123 block. You can see once it settles down, it reads a 0.2 degrees difference in measurement. To check the repeatability, I then remove the paper, and again, once it settles down, it returns to zero. The paper I'm using is also fairly thin, 
It's a particular type of post-it that is meant for all weather, uh, but it's much thinner than a normal post-it. It reminds me of painter's tape. I actually find it pretty useful in the shop also for zeroing my bits. Uh, the extra thinness of it means the difference between where you zero and the surface is that much less. I'll leave a link in the description to those as well. So to check the squareness of our machine, we can zero against the wasteboard, then use the magnetic base to hold the bottom against the bit, wait for it to settle down, and get a reading of 90.2 degrees. So let's take a look at what these two readings are telling us. The Mini Pro Tram system tells us that across the 3 inches that it measures, there is a 0 .003 inch deviation in the heights that its two dial indicators are reading. The digital angle gauge is telling us that we are 0.2 degrees off from having a perfect 90 degree angle. Though they're measuring the same thing, these two readings are not directly comparable. Let's revisit some of the trigonometry we've used in previous videos so we can see how these two measurements compare. We'll use the tangent function, where tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent. In this case, the angle we're looking for is equal to 0 0.003, our deviation, over the three inches that it's measuring. We can therefore determine that the tangent of this angle is equal to 0 0.001 and use the inverse tangent function to find out that the error as measured by the Mini Pro Tram system is 0 0.05 degrees. This value is significantly less than the 0.2 degrees measured by the digital angle gauge. We can use similar math to do the reverse for the Wixi measurement. In the case of the Wixi measurement, we have the angle of 0 0.02 degrees. In this case, I'm using 2 inches, the size of the Wixi gauge, as the hypotenuse of our right angle triangle. That gives us the formula that the sine of 0.2 degrees is equal to the opposite, the unknown value, divided by 2, the hypotenuse. Rearranging the formula, we get that the deviation, that is the opposite side, is equal to 2 times the sine of 0.2, or 0 0.007. You can see that we've gotten a deviation more than twice as large over a smaller distance. So we're definitely not getting the same readings between these two. Of the two tools, I'd almost certainly trust the Mini Pro Tram system more. It's not relying on electronics and, and accelerometers. But let's go one step further and figure out what this difference actually means. Here I've zoomed in much closer on the end of an end mill and I've exaggerated the angle significantly. We can look at a small portion. The thing with an end mill is it's only across a quarter of an inch. The deviation we're seeing at three inches and two inches is significantly longer than what we should see across, say, a quarter inch end mill, like the one I had installed. So the last bit of math we'll do is to try and work out what the actual deviation between the left side and the right side of the bit would be in a setup based on it being either 0 0.05 degrees or 0 0.2 degrees. Starting with the Mini Pro Tram system, which measured at 0 0.05 degrees, we can work out that the sine of 0 0.05, that would be the angle in here, is equal to the opposite side, the deviation we're looking to calculate, divided by the hypotenuse, the 0.25 inch diameter of the end mill, giving us 0.25 times the sine of 0.05 gives us 0 0.0002 inches of deviation between the left and the right. Or in other words, if you consider the center of the end mill to be your starting point, each side would be one ten thousandth of an inch low or high, depending on how you're looking at it. By comparison, with the digital angle gauge reading of 0.2 degrees, we would use the sine of 0.2, the small angle that we calculated, well that we measured, is equal to the opposite divided by 0.25, the R hypotenuse, 
Therefore, the opposite side is equal to 0.25 times the sine of 0.2 or 0 0.0008 inches, uh, or 8 ten thousandths of an inch. It's always good to put the numbers in these kinds of perspectives. While the error margin on the digital angle gauge is significantly higher than the Mini Pro tram system, it's still less than one thousandths of an inch. For a lot of applications, that's going to be fine, uh, especially if you're just cutting wood. If you're doing metal cutting, the tolerances are always much higher, but for a lot of users, the value given by the digital angle gauge is going to be more than sufficient to get you high quality cuts without any of the surface blemishes that we usually associate with poor tramming. I hope you found some of the information in this video useful. Depending on where you are in your Shapeoko learning curve, I would recommend everyone getting a set of 1-2-3 blocks. They're extremely cheap and versatile. And if you're trying to hunt down those last few thousands, definitely look into either the digital angle gauge or the mini pro tram system. Both tools are incredibly useful, though I will say the digital angle gauge lends itself to a lot of uses outside CNC. So if you're a woodworker or do other crafting, there may be some added value to that as well. The digital angle gauge is about a third of the cost at around $30, compared to around 100 for the Mini Pro tram system. That alone should give a lot of incentive for people to look at that as an option. If you enjoyed this content, please take a moment to like the video and consider subscribing. If you have any other suggestions for possible unusual tramming tools or just general tools that would be good for CNC users, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.